Hey, welcome to Truth Unbound. I'm Walter Swaim, and I am so glad, again, that you're here with me. Um, and we're going to jump right into this one, okay? It's almost Christmas time, and uh, the issue seems to crop up again every year and seems to be a little more sophisticated and a little bit louder each time. But here's what's happened. Uh, this is what's brought up, and that is that some say that we as Christians should not celebrate Christmas because it is, or at least originally was, a pagan holiday. Now, is that really true? Well, we're going to find out. We're going to look into God's Word, see what His truth, which is not bound by anyone or anything, and see what His truth says, and answer the question, and live according to God's Word. Let's do that right now. Hey, thanks again for joining me here at Truth Unbound. We are almost at Christmas, and I'm excited that you spent the time with me today because this topic is one that just keeps popping up and pressing on people, and the question comes out quite often, and we want to get this settled with God's truth once and for all. So if you would do this, uh, if I could ask you a favor, if you would click on like, and then also click on subscribe, hit all notifications so you know when the latest comes out from us here at Truth Unbound. And then uh, follow us if you're listening to the audio-only version. Uh, and then share it. Share it with everybody so that we could see this ministry continue to grow and more people understanding what God's truth says to the things that, uh, that are brought up today and questions and issues. Well, let's get right to it. Those who propose that Christmas is pagan and therefore we as Christians should boycott it and not celebrate it, usually base this argument or this belief on certain basic arguments, okay? And let me take them one by one. Number one, that the Christmas tree is pagan. Number two, the Yule log is pagan. Now, have you used or seen a Yule log lately? Yeah, neither have I, so we'll drop that one. But hey, had to give it an honorable mention. Uh they also say it's because it's based on an ancient Roman pagan holiday. And then that December 25th also was based on uh, cult, uh, Roman cult religions that celebrated their thing on the same day and it was integrated into Christianity, so we shouldn't be doing it. Or that it's not a celebration in the Bible. Well, let's start with, let's start with the Christmas tree being a pagan symbol, okay? And that's why we shouldn't be using it. Um, some say that the Christmas tree was originally what the pagan worshipers of the cult of Asherah, that worshipped Asherah, the goddess Asherah, uh, put trees in their homes and they decorated them as an act of worshipping their false god. Well, the problem is, this. now this is an ar ar argument that's pretty popular, but if you look in scholarly historical documents about this, you simply won't find this. That's all we can say about that, Okay. <laughs> So supposedly evergreen trees also were placed by Germans and Scandinavians inside their homes or just outside their doors to show their hope in the forthcoming spring. They say, well, that's pagan and we shouldn't be doing trees either. Now we do find this practice of Christmas trees mainly being a German practice centuries before us. But also it, there's a legend that um, they started to do this in Germany because Martin Luther in 1536 went out for a walk at night. He saw the stars and it made him think of Christ coming down to rescue us from heaven. So he put up a tree in his home, put lights on it, and all of this to commemorate that Jesus came uh, and became a man and the God-man died for us and for our sins. Well, regardless, it caught on a little more each year. And then even down into the mid-1800s, the British royal family uh, put lots of these types of trees in their home. Um, and then they were put out in photographs. And, and so it became hugely popular, spread throughout the rest of Europe and, of course, into America. But going back to the pagan part in history, ancient history, unless that can be proven substantially and then historically link it to Christianity through numerous sources, just smile when someone brings this up and say thanks for bringing it up and move on and decorate your Christmas tree. Now, what about December 25th? They say it's pagan, so we shouldn't celebrate it on December 25th or at all. Well, where's the evidence of that? You see, real historical evidence of its origin and connecting it to Christianity is just not there. Some say it is based on the Roman pagan celebration of the sun god, 
called Sol Evictus on December 25th. In reality, historical record is very weak. Uh, it's mentioned in a 4th century document. But what we do know is this day is celebrated as Sol Invictus, meaning the day of the unconquerable sun. Now, Constantine, the Roman emperor who made Christianity his own religion and then legalized it in the Roman Empire, he had won a certain war and associated the victory with the power of the sun. Uh, now, those opposing this day for Christians say there's the link. And it is pagan, not of Jesus. But again, there's no historical clear statements linking uh, this, and uh, especially in the writings of the early church fathers. In fact, the early church fathers constantly distanced themselves from the pagan religions altogether, Roman and otherwise. So others say Christmas is based on the pagan Roman festival Saturnalia because it was celebrated on December 25th. Actually, that's not entirely true. It was actually celebrated on December 17th and over the years was gradually extended to end on December 25th. Now, according to some accounts about it in historical documents, people would sing from house to house, naked, <laughs> oh, wow, eating a lot and eating baked goods in shape of people and even exchanging gaudy gifts. They say the Catholic Church absorbed it, tweaked it a little bit to become Christian, and we've been doing it ever since. Again, these are assumptions loosely based on dubious data at best. So December 25th is really not an issue. It doesn't matter really. It is what it is. It's December 25th and Christmas has been established on that. Now, let me add here, we do not know really if Jesus was born on December 25th. There's a possibility it was actually in September. But to simply say, hey, let's just put it on December 25th so Christians can recognize it together as, as one body pointing everyone to Christ, well, there's simply no, there's no scriptural prohibition against doing such a thing. You're free to do it. There's liberty there. So go for it, believer. Now, some reject Christmas because it's a pagan holiday, because it's based on the pagan Roman cult and its god called Mithra. They say that Mithra was born of a virgin on December 25th as well. Well, the problem is, is there's no real clear historical record of that either. To the contrary, we do know from historical record that this goddess Mithra was born out of a rock, not a virgin, and was born as a full-grown adult. Now also, you've got to understand, these ancient religions started after Christianity began. And so they were actually borrowing, borrowing their beliefs, or in what little we know of them, from Christianity and not the other way around. So the opponents to celebrating Christmas, again, because it's pagan, just simply have no real ancient, numerous real ancient sources to verify what they're saying and to justify their argument. Even if it was pagan and was similar to the Christian Christmas, and that's a big if, then they did a pretty good job of making it a day that for centuries now has made Jesus, his incarnation, a biblical doctrine, and his gospel, which is biblical, bigger than it ever could have been otherwise. In the end, here is what the believers should do with the Christmas celebration. You need to ignore the naysayers and enjoy it. Let it remind you as it's designed to, remind you of how Jesus came into the world, 100% God, 100% man, to save us from our sins and to grant forgiveness and eternal life to those who will believe in him. Use this time for family time together and the exchange of gifts is wonderful. Use it to invite people who many of which will, will come to church during Christmas and hear a message about Christmas the real Christmas story and what it's about when they naturally would not do that kind of thing and enter into the door of a church any other day of the year with maybe the exception of Easter. Now what is wrong for the believer is to celebrate Christmas without Christ as the center of it all. You see, to be a believer and celebrate Christmas just to have gifts or to focus on the commercial and Santa and all the, all the rest, uh, or to be gluttonous and, and drink heavily and then embarrass your coworkers or family, all of that is a bad idea for the believer. It doesn't honor God. It doesn't glorify him. 
As we always say, keep Christ in Christmas. Enjoy it as such and give praise to God for his indescribable gift. You know, it's like it says in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. It says, And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. That is why we celebrate Christmas, because Jesus came to save us from our sins. We celebrate it as it is, not as it was, even if those arguments they present to us are true, which we don't find that they are. So celebrate Christ in Christmas. Remember just to follow Jesus, because when you follow Jesus, you'll always follow the truth.